Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. 27 students of the Federal College of Forestry Mechanization in Afaka Kaduna are now free after spending 55 days in captivity. They are among the 37 students abducted by gunmen who attacked the school on March the 11th. 10 of the students had earlier been released and uh, the, after their parents reportedly paid ransom. A parent whose two daughters were among those now free is joining us on the phone from Kaduna. His name is Friday Sani. Good morning, Mr. Sani. Good morning. How was your name? Fine, thank you. So congratulations thank to you. I remember the last time we spoke on the breakfast where, you know, yeah. basically talking about how your daughters were kidnapped, you know, just hearing from you, expressing all the pain and agony of, you know, that the incident at that time. But it's it's great news now. Congratulations again. Thank you very much. Thank All you right. very much. Can you actually confirm to us that your daughters are with you at home? Oh, my daughter, uh, the first one, his, her name is uh, Victory Sunny. Uh, the, the second one is uh, Rejoice Sunny. In fact, as I'm talking to you now, I, I am in the hospital, the police medical uh, uh, hospital here in Kaduna. Uh, to see if I can see their face. Uh, I was lucky to see them briefly, uh, and I think they are in a stable condition. Information as to how they were released that you can share with us? Uh, actually, you remember uh, three days ago, we were in Abuja for a protest because we, we the parents, we ran out of patience. Uh, apart from that, uh, you know that uh, sometimes ago, uh, Chief Olushe Sanjo and Sheikh Mohammed Wumi lend their voice to the plight of our children and see to see how they can uh, help to fast, facilitate their release. Uh, here we are today. Uh, we have them, and uh, that is all I could say for now. Uh, we were just informed. I, if I was on my way to the house from a meeting when I got a call that 27 of them were released. And uh, I have to stop by to check the, on the social media where I also uh, read it on the social media that uh, 27 of them were released. So I, somehow I become a little bit panic, uh, worried because we are agitated for 29. But when we have, when we confirm, uh, we're told that uh, there were 27 actually, and all of them were released. Okay. Well, uh, what I'm asking is, you know, information like, do you know where they were dropped off, where they were picked up from? Who who was the first person who heard that they were going to be set free? Can can you share with us any information um, about yeah, all of I, what happened yesterday? I was trying to get the source of the information yesterday and uh, from what i read on the media on the social media and online news uh, the news was broke by uh, daily, daily trust uh, online and uh, when i tried to confirm i was told that they were dropped somewhere around kidende uh, somewhere in giwa local government uh, that is where the police picked them up from and then straight to the police headquarters. Immediately I got the news, I drove to the police headquarters uh, with my wife. Uh, where even they are the police headquarters before they arrive. Okay. So, so you were there basically when the, the police vehicle you know, dropped the kids that like we've, been, we've been showing on our screen, you know, the video of you know, the students alighting from that bus. You were there when, when they came? Yeah, I was actually there when they arrived at the police headquarters. Uh, and uh, if I did you were on channel yesterday, I addressed channel TV briefly before I left the place because I was not granted access to enter the, the facility there. So I have to wait till this morning uh, to at least come and see them, bring some clothes for them to put on. So um, we heard claims from one of the parents that they had been directed to one of the bandits called Ahmed. 
whom they paid 800,000 Naira to. But we're seeing reports that the parents denied ever paying um, 800,000 Naira ransom. Do you have any you know, verifiable information regarding if the parents paid any money at all to the bandits for the release of their kids? I don't think there is anything like that. Actually, we read it, and we, the parents, I am this, I serve as a spokesperson for the parents. And if you have been following us in all our press statements, there is never a time something like that uh, 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 came between us and our, our mediator. I mean, the person facilitating the negotiation for us. So the woman that made that statement was not the spokesperson. It was, she was not uh, delegated to make any, I think she was making it out of her emotion. And maybe, maybe, maybe she, from back, she must have done something like that, maybe for her own son. But we didn't have any information as to that. We have a chairman, we have, I am serving as a secretary and at the same time the spokesperson. If there is anything like that that exchange hands, at least I should be able to know. So I was surprised when we saw that on on the news that the woman was saying that they paid uh, one uh, ex bandit uh, eight hundred thousand naira, and uh, in fact as a, a, a kind of transportation to where, to where that is just the that is just the question. So there is nothing like that. I think some people want to drag the name of uh, Sheikh Dr. Mohamed Gumi into a mod, which we, the parents, will not allow. We will not. So me, and they have said yesterday, you we have addressed, we have sent a press statement to the media debunking that, yeah, and okay. uh, also apologized to the doctor, I mean the Sheikh, that uh, um, that uh, information is, uh, is fake. It's not from us, and it cannot be from us. So Sani, if there is any the... information that will be used or should be established, it's either that information should come from me or the chairman of the committee. And without Chair, that, I, uh, I think on, I suggest Sani, hold and on. I, I hold on. feeling that the media should, shouldn't work with such an information. All right, Mr. Sani, I'm, you are the chairman and secretary of what committee, what committee are you speaking of? Uh, I, am a, I am the spokesperson for the group. Uh, we have a chairman in the place of uh, uh, Malam Osman Abdullahi. Chairman of what? 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 What are you referring to? What we, group? We, we, when this incident took place uh, on the third of Ma I mean on the eleventh of March this year, uh, about a week later, we set up a committee, and uh, because they, they, they call it provost recommend that the parents should have a committee because. Everybody cannot be carried along, even if there is anything to be done. And uh, we set up eight man, eight men committee to uh, observe and uh, observe the processes of uh, uh, recovering these children. So that is what we did. So I serve as a secretary and spokesperson of the committee. Why, Mr. Samuel Kambai, at that time? serve as a chairman but later we were dissolved and then another new people came on where we have mr abdullah uh, usman as a chairman and mr keller was serving as a spokesperson uh mrs katrin saleh was serving as a as a secretary to the committee and uh, that was done about a week or two ago uh, before the release of the children today I know you've talked about the information that money was paid, but how about the fact? Did you as a parent, or are you aware of any other parents actually contributing money to pay for the release of the children? I want to say that um, in the course of our, in the course of our uh, observing and movement around, we have cause to engage ourselves and see how we can, how we can on our own uh, raise funds for what we call logistics. Myself and the chairman have been moving here and there for this uh, negotiation process. After we've got permission from the state government that we can go ahead on negotiation. So we didn't give anybody, anybody money. 
you understand? We okay. didn't give anybody money. So, right. and I, we, we have no cause to engage any parents or tell any parents to give anybody money. You understand? When, you remember the other time, 10 people were released in two batches from that same camp. Those 10 people, some people thought that maybe we would have gone from, we would have gone from back to pay ransom for those 10. And, or maybe the parents of those 10 would have paid ransom for them to be released. And I debunk it. Nobody pay. And if anybody is to pay any ransom, they will come through me. Okay. And right. that so would Mr. have provided a platform for myself All right. to pay for my children. At least, if I cannot pay for two at that time, I would have paid for one of them. Okay. So, so Mr. there Sani... is nothing like that. All right. You, you, you've established that the parents did not pay any money to, the, to secure the release of the children. And I remember we... that... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't. We okay. didn't. Okay. I, and I remember that, you know, parents had mobilized, traveled from Kaduna to Abuja, the National Assembly Complex to protest the release of their children. Can you tell yeah. me about the whole process, you know, coming together to plan that travel? And when you went to Abuja, what the response of the government was at that time? Because what we saw in the news was that, you know, they locked the, the gates of the National Assembly and denied you entrance into the building. So please walk us through that process of, you know, moving yes, to Abuja what, and... Yes, please go ahead. Actually, we, we, we decided as a committee, immediately after the uh, reshuffment of the committee, I uh, summoned the, 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 the ESCO because I still serve as assistant to the new... Uh, spokesperson. So I suggest that there should be a committee meeting where we will review what was done so far and then think of the way forward. It was in that committee I personally suggest that an ultimatum should be given to the Director General of Forestry Research Institute and we gave him 72 hours ultimatum that something should be done fast since we are no longer expecting anything from the, from the state government. So that something should be done fast and that was born out of the fact that we realized that the students of Greenfield University are now being killed. So we now decided to issue that ultimatum to the DG, which till we went to Abuja, and the condition we gave was that, one, if we fail to meet up our demand between that 72 hours, we are going to march to Abuja and one of the reasons was that we are not happy with the way the Director General handled the issue because no parents, he has no reason to engage parents on this matter. He didn't come for us, he didn't call. Us. Even when the ultimatum was given to him, he did not speak to it. Hmm. So, and we told him that if we didn't get these children before the weekend of last, uh, uh, of, uh, 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 last week, we are marching to Abuja on Tuesday. And he did not respond either in written or in call. So we now decided to take it as we, uh, as we decide to go to Abuja to seek uh, the intervention of the lawmakers so that they will, put their, they will lend their voice into this situation because we are like being beaten from every side. The state government was not responding to us. Our own constituency, which is Forestry Research Institute, we are not hearing anything from them. Only the provost of the college was speaking to us. And he came to a point that uh, he looked as if uh, the provost had exhausted all, the, all he has to tell us. So we were left unattended to. And the only thing we could do was to just move further to Abuja. Because the school is under the federal government establishment. So okay. we moved there. Now, I was not being allowed to enter into the uh, assembly complex. It's not the issue here. But the most important thing is that we were able to achieve our aim. We were outside the complex. The deputy clerk, clerk of the National Assembly was sent to attend to us. And after presenting our letter and our appeal to them, we moved to where we, put, uh, uh, we parked our vehicles. And before we could kick the vehicle and move back to Abuja, they sent a powerful delegation of four men representing all the service chiefs 
to come, I mean, the chairman uh, of the committee of, uh, of defense, that of uh, army, that of uh, navies, that of air force, were delegated to meet us and hear from us and pacify us to calm down why they attend to our issue. All right. okay. And you remember Mrs. that very day, Tuesday, the letter was sent to the chamber of the House of Reps, and it was extensively, extensively discussed. And we were also informed that the House were supposed to go on recess mm -hmm. on that day and will not resume again till after solar break. But okay, they, have to reconvey, they have to reconvene today, Thursday, so also uh, interrogate the matter uh, of Federal uh, College of Forestry. Okay. And here we are, before the reconvening of today, the children have been released, okay. and we are happy about that. All right. so, we have actually achieved our aim. So, Mr. Sani, I wanted to find out from you, how many parents or SUG members you know, traveled with you from Kaduna to Abuja for that protest? I want to let you know that all the parents were there. Those that couldn't come because of their health challenge, delegate somebody from their family and we did not just travel with only parents we travel with the student union government officials can you give me a and number? some of the consigned students of the college C can you give me a number as to how many people traveled to to abuja we from karuna here we have about 51 people that travel with us okay all right um yeah. i, I want to you know go into other um angles now first of all i'll start with the uh, confusion with regards to the numbers. Um, it, it initially was 29. Now we're talking about 27. Um, is there a possibility that there's still two that are unaccounted for, or there was a mistake with counting the number of people in the first place? Yeah, actually, there is a mistake in the counting. The, the, we, the committee, we are working on the first number that was given to us, and the first number was 39. Minus 10 out of 39, you have 29. And because we cannot, we don't, we, 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 we stick with the bandits at the time. They were telling us to come and collect our children. We don't have the time to ask them question how many children are in their custody. Uh, even the pros of the college couldn't have known because it's like the people that compile the list make some mistakes by adding additional to. So from the information I got yesterday, the students were asked, those who were released were asked, uh, after being counted, there were 27, and when they asked them, where are the remaining two? They said, no, these are all, all of us. There is not, no, nobody else. We are 27, and that is what we know. All right. Um, you also made mention that you met with the bandits. Um, can we get any information as to who these people are? Uh, that... We didn't meet with them. We spoke with them on phone because that was oh, okay. their location when they felt frustrated that the government was not speaking to them, they are not uh, receiving any call from any government uh, representative, those that were negotiating with them, uh, they will not strike, strike a deal as at the time they expect the deal to be struck. And uh, they now resort to calling each parent to come for negotiation and uh, pay the ransom for the release of their children. Uh, of course, we told them that they, 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 they did not tell us from the beginning that we are the one to negotiate. And that is why we didn't. So the, the call became so uh, frequent and accompanied with a very severe threat. I want to say that God, God, God is the one in charge of this uh, release of these children. Because if I tell you the, the kind of threat we receive, you will be surprised. Yeah, but... So, that is what really happened. We cannot tell who are these, but we read on the paper that the commander of this group uh, who uh, uh, adopted these children was called one Bodiri, a Fulani person. And that is all I know about him. All right. Uh, also speak uh, once again on the role Sheikh Gumi played um, yeah. in all of this. Hello. Yes, go ahead. I'm asking, can you speak on, on the role Sheikh Gumi yeah. had, uh, played in all of actually, this? Actually, from the government house, after, re, after a repeated appeal to the government to intervene and they failed us, we were invited to the government house and the government told us that 
their position is still standing that we not negotiate with any uh, bandit, any criminal. So we appeal to the government to give us the opportunity to go and negotiate, look for how we can negotiate for the release of our children. There we have their way that we are free to do that, but not on the platform of the government. So it was within that period we took our cry to him because we read his, the role he played at Kagara. We read the, about the role he played at Jangebe and uh, Kankara. So we felt that he could be of help to us. And when we get to him, he told us he will do his best. And you know that there was a time he traveled down to Ota in Abiokuta, Ogo State, to meet the uh, former uh, president of Nigeria, Chief Olisha Wabasanjo. This issue, this issue was the major issue that took him today to the place. Because when you read uh, the outcome of their meeting, you know he was speaking directly on the issue of the uh, Federal College of Forestry students and all other uh, security challenge in this nation. So he must have played a very vital role in this issue. He must have played a very vital role on this issue alongside with the pre uh, former president of Nigeria. So we really commend him. Yesterday I spoke with the Punch or uh, Round Table, and I said people should stop castigating this man. I'm a Christian. He's a Muslim leader. And we have seen something good in him. And I want to let you know that without him lending his voice on this matter, alongside with our former, vice pre our former president, it would have been difficult for us. I must tell you the truth. Right. Apart from God, I think they play a vital role in this, on the release of these children. Okay. And they should be commended for that. So, Mr. Sani, earlier, you know, when you were responding to one of our questions, you said you've gotten lots of threats regarding your protests. Could you shed more light on that? What sort of threats did you get? Uh, they, 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 they respond. Uh, are you talking about the response from the National Assembly? No, you mentioned that you've been getting threats. Getting, okay, threats. Yes. Yeah, we got threats from the bandits. There was a time they told us that if we don't come in less than 24 hours to come and pay ransom and rescue our children, that they are going to kill all of them. In fact, while we were talking, the man told me, he said, just wait, just wait. You will hear the sound of the gun. And he shot to the air. He told, us, he told me again that, look, you people are thinking that when you gave us money, we are going to buy ammunition. We already have ammunition. We have every type of ammunition, every type of gun in our hands. So we don't need to buy guns. But it is a must that we must pay this ransom. Then the other time I, they spoke with me again, they said we should forget about our children, that they are going to marry the female ones off, and then the boys, they are going to kill them. And the only thing we could do was to keep pacifying, keep begging them, that they should give us time. You can't just tell us, uh, bring five million today, or uh, bring five million and collect your child, and then you expect me to get the five million between now and tomorrow. You understand? These are the nature of threat we receive. Wow. Like the last time they told us, they said no child will leave that camp except if the family, I mean the parents pay five million. And I have two children there. I have to pay 10 million. That is what they are saying. And I know that raising 10 million will take me no less than 10 years. So it means my children will be as good as dead in that camp. So um, when we saw them being released, you could just imagine how, how happy we are today. So, Mr. Sani, really, I, I want you to share with me in detail, how do you feel now? I mean, after all this struggle, the protests, the threats, the threats to marry your daughters off and kill the sons, how do you feel now? I actually spoke with Channel yesterday. I said, the joy I have today supersedes all the threats, all the traumas, all the challenges that I face within these two months. Mm. In fact, the joy has superseded all the trauma that we go through. In fact, all the burden. In fact, it may interest you to know that I carried a heavy load. I was serving 
uh, a kind of uh, I, I was just I was just serving a, a, a kind of a, 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 taking a responsibility that is more than my power. Because while I was facing the trauma of having two children in the bandits' den, I was also speaking for the rest parents. And the calls, in fact, yesterday night, I can tell you that calls that enter my phone from the other parents and their family relatives that called me, it was it is just too much that wow. I couldn't drop phone for almost one hour. Right. As I'm receiving call. Another call is entering. I'm picking that another one will be coming in. And that is how it was. My own relatives were calling from all corners of this country, asking me what is on, what is going on, what are they saying now? All right, are you getting the point? And it gets to a point that I got exhausted. I don't know what else to tell them. All right, thank you. Let, so let's, let's also talk about... I have a relief. Yeah. The call that came Mr. now Mr. Sani. after they are released was not as stressful as that of uh, as that of their time that they are still in the hand of the bandits. All right, because Mr. Mr. Sani, can I you hold on? They call now can, with would joy you hold on, in please? my mind and it will joy in my heart and the joy of the face of my wife. Friday, Sani, can you hold on? Thank you, I, and we celebrate with you. And we are of Thank course uh, equally glad that you know this, it has turned out this way. Um, but Thank you. Of course, there's still. Uh, kids that uh, are from the Greenfield University uh, that are still in captivity and of course so we hope that you know it plays out the same way and they are set free as uh, soon Amen. as possible um, but I, I also want to ask your thoughts with regards the people who carried out this very very terrible act the bandits you know would you of course have liked that they be arrested was there is there any hopes that these people be caught so that no other child has to go through this come again um, I'm asking about the bandits and the people who kidnapped your children. Um, yeah. Yes, we celebrate that these kids have been released, but you know, is it, would you also ask that the government ensures that these people are arrested and um, you know they they are no longer a, a danger to kids in Kaduna State and in northern Nigeria again? Yeah. Um, actually, we receive a threat from the state government that uh, because of our protest some times ago and uh, subsequent uh, press statement released from us. The state government threatened to arrest us. And uh, some of our press statements, uh, it's not as if uh, we insulted anybody. And I don't see anything incriminating against, about it. Uh, the truth remains that they are, the government said they will not negotiate. And we came to the media and told the media we are going to negotiate for the release of our children. The children in the hand of the bandits are not aerophile children. It is the children of the masses. And uh, you cannot just tell us we should not negotiate. Did he want them to die in the hand of the bandit? Did he want them oh. to rot in, in the bush? Well, the I'm, blood I'm, that flows through his vein and through the vein of his children is the same blood that flows through our vein and the vein of our children. Yeah, uh, we... So we should be treated the way he should, he should treat our children the way he treats his own children. Absolutely. And, and that we is also the had first a... thing if I... He, he promised to do yeah. securing life and property. So when he comes to this responsibility and he's denying us what he promised us, then we should speak to him. We should come out and condemn it. So Absolutely. when he say we will be arrested after our children, the rest of our children are released, I felt that, okay, at least the arrest will come after the children will be released or are released. So today, if I'm arrested today, my children will witness that I was arrested because I, I fought for their own release from the bandits. Mm. Right. And I told the press the other day, my children were under the arrest of the bandit with AK-47 steadily pointed to them. But if government arrest me today, I will be in their custody and I will relax, knowing that one day they will leave me. Nobody come to the prison with AK-47 to monitor me the way my children were monitored in the bush. Yeah. And these are female children. Majority of them are female children. You know how the kind of trauma they will go through. So I will be happy if today I'm arrested. I don't have anything to anything to to quarrel about. Okay. At least the we, whole we, world we would have with... known that I fought for the right, for the freedom and justice for my children 
and I was arrested by the government that did not care about the life of my children. So I would be one of the most happiest person if today the government will arrest me. But you also know that after I made that uh, statement, in my uh, last statement, the government came out to deny that they did not say something like that. That there are people that impersonate themselves as government officials negotiating on behalf of government. Uh, in our case, we are negotiating on behalf of our children, not government. So that is the issue. So yeah. we don't have any quarrel about that, sir. We, we already, of course, had uh, spoken with uh, Samuel Laruan, the uh, Commissioner for Security and Home Affairs in Kaduna State. Um, yeah. and he also, you know, spoke on, you know, the statements that you just made now. Um, and hopefully yeah. we can bring him in uh, um, on the program, uh, maybe today or tomorrow, to clarify it's and, right. of course, uh, give uh, further details. Um, but I'm asking it's about right. the bandits and the people who kidnapped your children. Um, yes. Would you, you know, also demand that they are arrested and they are prosecuted uh, so that other kids in Kaduna State and across the north uh, are safe? Um, if actually government has a way to do that, they should go ahead and do it. If they could have, if they have a way of doing that, you remember that Afaka case was not the first case in, Af in Kaduna. Before Afaka case, as an institution, the staff of airport were, uh, were uh, kidnapped from their own quarters at, uh, at the international airport here in Kaduna. There are several other kidnap cases uh, in several individual houses in Kaduna. If Kaduna State government were careful enough and they are proactive, I think they would have done a lot before this major one. Okay. You understand? So now arresting bandits, I think um, when, if they have the ability to do that, they should do it because nobody is above the law. Okay. But I think one of the things that uh, I would suggest uh, in my own way is to buy the idea of uh, Sheikh Dr. Gumi, who take the, the message, a message of Allah to them in the bush. And in the course of his meeting with them, we learned that a lot of them drop their arms. And is advocating for that the government should integrate, integrate, integrate these people into the society by way of empowering them, give them a kind of amnesty. So if the government will engage them in a way of dialogue, know their grievances, know why they go into this act, I think is the best thing to do. So you're saying... You remember in Niger, yeah. one of them uh, laid down his arm, and uh, when he couldn't, he couldn't get what he expected from the government, we were told he returned back to the bush to carry on his uh, 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 banditry activities. But we were told later that he was killed. So, Friday, so Sunny, you're we saying... a key interest to rehabilitate, I mean, get these people, rehabilitate them, get them integrated into the, so into the, into the society... I think it is the best way to do. All right. So because Friday, Sunny, just to clarify. The, the information we are getting from, even the first 10 that were released, yeah. they, they, the kind of weapon they have is so suffocated that even the military will be afraid of them. All right. So you're and saying, so to, Friday, Sunny, go after Friday, Sunny. Way, it is the masses, just Friday, as it happened now. It is the masses that will suffer. None Friday, Sunny, so you're saying, officers, so you're saying officers. after your kids have been released, you're asking that the bandits be granted amnesty and be reintegrated into society? Mr. Sunny, can you hear me? Major Mr. Sunny, well, to clarify what you're saying, after your two daughters have been released along with 25 others, um, you're asking that the government should grant these bandits amnesty and reintegrate them into society. Yeah, what we are saying is that if the state government can do something, I think this thing, you remember I read something about uh, Chief Obafemi Aluwolo, who made a statement that the children you refuse to train today will haunt you tomorrow. I don't know whether you get the point. Yes, I do. If I do. these people are ravaging the society because they are not cared for, then listen to them. 
know their complaint. How do you attend to their complaint? I, I don't know whether you get the point. If it is something that is within the power of government to do, as far as they, you will face them out of, you will face them out of the bush into the into the city, so that people can be free. Look at how we are now. In the course of this, uh, what is it called? The negotiation. Somebody attempt to sell his farmland among us. But nobody was coming to, 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 to even talk about buying the, 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 the farmland because the farmers are not secured in their farm. They cannot go to farm and, uh, to their farm to carry out their farming activities. So, so, so what, what kind of reintegration into society it, are you everybody referring to? Everybody will be affected. Yeah. Uh, so, so what the, kind of reintegration... What kind of reintegration into society are you referring to now? Are you saying that they should be given jobs, they should be placed on allowance by the government, you know, they should, you know, basically be given government positions? We, what exactly? We don't, we don't encourage government to pay those that are not working. If you look at it in Kaduna State now, Kaduna State is downsizing workers. They are downsizing workers, which the labor are fighting against it. So the, the, the means of paying wages to non-workers may not be there. All right, so Sunny, that's... I believe that you can bring these people from the bush, train them, give them a, a kind of vocational training where they can be self-reliant apart from banditry. All right, Friday, Sunny, we, we, we do... Friday, Sunny, uh, apologies yes, to Button, but we do understand where you're coming from. You're saying tackle the causes of insecurity, not necessarily just, you know having a, you know, an operation to just kill them. We understand where you're coming from. But uh, quickly, how soon do you, do you think you would like your kids to return back to school? The reason why I ask this is because, you know, analysts have been saying that the reason why these bandits and terrorists are doing this, attacking schools and kidnapping children, is to, you know, basically cut down education. But from your stance, when all this is over, when, you know, everything is cool, do you, do you see yourself taking your kids back to school? That of the school. You, are you talking about the school? Yes. Do you see yourself taking your kids back to school like very soon? Um, the case of me taking my children back to school, uh, yes, yeah, definitely they will have to study. They will have to study, but they are going back to that particular school depend on the security major put in place. Okay. Without proper security measure in place if it is that particular area that the school is located it may interest you to know that i work in that particular school and i must say that we are we, are, we have deficit in terms of security if proper security check is not placed in that school i want to bet you you will never see any of these children that were released the 39 children that were released going back to that school. All right. And I will also tell you that the, 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 the long time, the long time it took, it took, the long time it took for them to rescue the children will also tell negatively on the school. Right. It will tell negatively on the school because one, even if my children are not adopted, and I had a story that there is a school that uh, students were adopted, and the management failed to rescue those children within three, four, five days. And it lasted up to two months. I will be scared taking my children there. All right, Mr. Friday, Sani, I think that's the much we can take right now. Thank you very much for coming on Plus TV Africa's The Breakfast. Congratulations again on the release of your children. You mentioned Thank you, were, you, you were only able to Thank see them briefly much. yesterday. We hope you can see them and, uh, you know, you can re reunite with your kids again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, we'll take a break here and uh, we'll be right back to talk uh, uh, politics governance in Nigeria. Do stay with us.